If you would like to hear why I switched from the Creality CR10 3D printer to a Creality Ender 3 Pro, then join me in this video. I'll share the reasons why I switched from a CR10 to the Ender 3 Pro, but also I will mention the changes they made to the standard Ender 3 to make it an Ender 3 Pro. I got my Ender 3 Pro from Banggood, they were kind enough to provide this item for free so check out the link to their website in the description below. This was shipped from their EU warehouse, I received it via GLS courier and it took something like a full week for delivery. Shipping from within the EU is obviously a big plus because you don't have to pay any import taxes and it gets here much faster than it would from China. Inside the box everything is well packed and protected with foam but compared to the CR10 the Ender 3 is less assembled to say so, there is more assembly for us to do. Now if you're in a hurry that might be an issue, uh, for example if you want to build a 3D printer farm, but for me I actually like doing this assembly work on a new gadget. Here are all the parts, I've laid them on the table, there is this assembly guide with uh, some nice drawings to help me put this together. So next I'm just gonna follow all the steps in the assembly guide and I'm probably going to speed this up in editing. While doing the assembly I took a look at the supplied SD card and I also found an assembly video with English captions, it was well made and easy to follow. But there are two extra steps I did during the assembly, number one was to take off the power supply protection cover and make sure all connections are nice and tight and that the voltage selection switch on the power supply is in the right position, for me that's 240 volts. And number two, the lead screw comes already greased, but in my experience with the CR10, that type of grease will attract dust on the lead screw, which will turn into this black gunk over time. So I cleaned the entire lead, lead screw, I cleaned off the existing grease with some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush, and at the end I applied some dry PTFE lube to the lead screw, which in my opinion is better suited for this application. It took me maybe a couple of hours to put this uh, together and it can probably be done in uh, much less than that. But why hurry? I like doing this kind of stuff nice and slow because I'm enjoying it. Now let's talk a little bit about the differences from a standard Ender 3 and by far the biggest upgrade they've done is this uh, power supply which is now a Minwell power supply instead of a no-name unit. This is important for safety, Minwell makes good power supplies with all the required safety ratings and this uh, Minwell power supply should last longer by using better quality parts and it should be quieter by being more efficient and using a nicer uh, cooling fan that is not going to make uh, as much noise as before, but overall this upgrade is not going to make any change in the printing quality. 
The electronics box cooling fan position has changed for the Ender 3 Pro. It now has the fan moved to the bottom, which prevents the breeze from the print surface falling into the cooling fan. But at the expense of decreased airflow, I suspect, because there isn't much clearance between the fan and the top of the table. The profile for the Y-axis was also upgraded to a 40-40 sized aluminum profile which improves stability on the Y-axis and this should be the biggest contributor to print quality improvements if there is any with the Ender 3 Pro. The print surface was upgraded to this uh, magnetic type surface and I believe this also comes as uh, standard with the current Ender 3 but it wasn't standard before so it's considered an upgrade for the Ender 3 Pro. This type of print surface has great adhesion but it also deteriorates over time and it's not as easy to align back on the bed if you remove this. One other minor upgrade is the silicon sock insulator that now comes as standard over the hot end. During the assembly job I made sure everything is nice and tight and ready for print, the rollers, the belts and I also leveled the printer using a sheet of paper. Next I loaded the PLA sample filament that was included in the box and let it do a test print. It was this uh, dog design I found on the included SD card and the piece took three hours to print. I guess they set the speed settings pretty low for these uh, pre-sliced parts included and uh, I guess they did, they did that in order to get the best print quality out of the box. There is a bit of stringing which you wouldn't expect from a brand new printer using their sampled filament but nothing too bad. Overall, this uh, is considered a decent print. I am planning to do some upgrades to this 3D printer to improve on some aspects. So let me mention a few of the upgrades I plan to do. First, I would like to add auto bed leveling in the form of this uh, 3D touch slash build touch sensor as I've been using these on the CR10 and it's a must have upgrade. Next I want to upgrade the motherboard to a 32-bit one with silent stepper drivers and not only that but the new motherboard should allow me to add future upgrades as well by having more available I.O. and flash memory. I'll probably go for something like the Big 3 Tech SKR Mini. Next I will probably upgrade to an E3D V6 clone hot end and possibly a direct drive extruder. I'll have to see if that's possible to do without big modifications. I will also be looking into a possible aluminum bed upgrade at a later time because the standard one it's not very straight and I would also add some bed insulation to the uh, bottom of the heated bed for better thermal stability and quick heat up time. I have experience with that on the CR10 it, and it really improved the thermals. And now a few comments on the upgrades they chose to make for the Ender 3 Pro and whether or not I think they are worth paying the extra $30 over the standard Ender 3 Pro because at the time of publishing this video the difference between the two at least in the EU stock was only $30 more for the Pro version. And well if we look at the power supply alone if you would want to do that upgrade yourself it would probably cost you more than $30 to get that meanwhile power supply delivered. So just for the power supply alone it would be worth paying a bit extra for getting the pro version. But you would also be getting a few extras like the magnetic build plate and the wider profile on the Y axis as well as the silicon insulating sock for the hot end. Now if you are willing to add $20 more to the Ender 3 Pro price bringing the total at $259 and having it shipped from China you can also consider the Ender 3 V2 which shares the upgrades of the Ender 3 Pro and adds more like uh, TMC2208 silent drivers, it has uh, belt tensioners, a new color LCD and a special glass printing surface. But myself, I would prefer to do these upgrades myself, choose my own motherboard to have better flexibility. If you don't need that flexibility then go for the Ender 3 V2. The weakest point on all of these printers is still probably on the extruder and the hot end. So any upgrades to the extruder or hot end will bring improvements to the print quality. Even a simple upgrade like a Capricorn tube would probably improve things quite a bit by not allowing so much slack in the Bowden tube. I saw some reports online that Thermal Runaway was being uh, disabled by Creality on the default firmware that ships on these printers 
but uh, current units like mine don't seem to have that issue uh, the protection is active i have checked and it's active on my printer so i'm pretty happy with my new 3d printer i think it will be a great base for future upgrades and it's really inexpensive even in its stock configuration for the printing quality it delivers the big plus of this model is because of its popularity you can find these ready-made plug-and-play upgrade kits for this particular model you can even find linear rails upgrade kits if you'd like to see more 3d printing videos i'll link a playlist on screen so click here to see more videos thank you for watching thank you for your support and i'll see you next time with a new video